The interrelation between species and small and large-scale symbiosis are the fundamental pillars of the global ecosystem's sustainability. The Mediterranean is a sea of moderate currents and tides. However, with eternal insistence, the tides have sculpted the whimsical profile of its coastline. Beaches are formed in bays and coves by the accumulation of mineral sediments of diverse origins, more or less crushed by the strength of the waves. In order to avoid beach sand from being washed away by currents, it's essential that Mediterranean tapeweed prairies carry out their vital function of holding on to substrate, thus firming down dips to avoid the movement of submerged sands. This forms a firm base on which superficial sand can settle. So instead of being washed away, it accumulates. Thus, without tapeweed, the fine sand beaches of the Mediterranean wouldn't exist. Once more, two ecosystems, one underwater and the other on the surface, are closely linked. Toppled a long time ago, the former king of the Mediterranean beach, the monk seal, refuses to disappear from the planet. Fewer than 500 individuals are spread out in small communities between the coasts of Greece and Turkey, as well as a few dispersed locations on the North African coast, Mauritania and Madeira. They are destined to disappear in agony because of the vast distances between their population and the drastic reduction of their vital space. Out of the water, Beaches also need help to keep the sand relatively down pat. For that, they turn to the all-important vegetation, which creates dunes and terraces that prevent the sand from dispersing in the wind and protect many birds that come to the coasts to nest. The common tern travels thousands of miles to reproduce in warm Mediterranean temperatures. Their reproductive stages are synchronized with those of the fish they hunt. They are sure to find enough nutrients to feed their offspring in these rich coastal waters. The little tern usually prefers the more quiet waters of estuaries and deltas to procure nourishment. But both species nest in beach dunes more or less close to the shore, forming large communities that allow them to better control possible predators. The degradation and disappearance of coastal areas, along with the necessary conditions for their reproduction, seriously affect numerous birds and sea turtle species. Little red plovers, ruddy turnstones, and Audrain's gulls also nest in the coveted coastal margins, and they too have been seriously affected by human pressure that leaves them few places to quietly develop their populations. The vulnerable situation of the Audouin's gull presently makes it highly dependent on trawling flotsam, and the crisis in the fishing industry could seriously affect its population. In this enclosed sea, there is a prodigious biological diversity with a high degree of closely linked endemism. Unfortunately, many species are in grave danger due to pollution, overfishing, and the environment's devastation. 
Over the last few decades, we've almost done away with a natural inheritance millions of years old. Few are the mythical colossi that huff near these coasts inspiring legends anymore. The ancient sea of the Romans, the Mare Nostrum, isn't it still our sea? The sea that washes over three continents, that has seen the birth of hundreds of cultures since the origin of man, and that still feeds us. It's in our hands to learn from the mistakes and change our mindset, substituting our predatory attitude with another that is more sustainable and less aggressive with the environment. After thousands of years supplying enormous resources to empires that have ruled its coast at its expense, we now better understand the biological function of this small ocean. But we continue on without valuing the importance of its incredible biodiversity, without which the sea wouldn't be more than water and salt. And us? Who knows what would have become of us without our sea? Thank you.